So for this uh, last lecture, actually, I am going to talk to you a little bit about modeling fish populations with FAST, which is a software that a lot of people use. Now, there's a few things I need to talk about before we get into the lecture. Uh, as you know, normally when we do these sort of things, we have an assignment. I want you to do these hands-on. I don't want to just talk about them. I want you to actually perform them, and I've got you know specific instructions for how to perform them. Here's the problem. Uh, this is not shareware. I have a purchased copy, and that's all I have. And so logistically, it's very difficult. Um, you'd have to come in. I, you know, we could get around that. But um, a lot of the stuff that you can do in FAST we have already done with R. So say von Bertalanffy growth and things like that. We did those using that new program, uh, that new package that, 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 that someone wrote for R. And that was the method to my madness here, is that you learned how to do it in R, which of course is freeware, and so you should be able to do that. So a lot of the things that people use FAST for can be done in R. And you know how to do that, so great. Uh, the only thing that you can can do in FAST and you can't do anywhere else is some of the yield models, Beverly and Holt, the Ricker models that we're going to talk about in the second part. Okay, so that's what you really need FAST for. Now, my guess is that there's going to be probably a new version of FAST, or that somebody's going to come up with a way to do this in R pretty soon. So we'll keep an eye out for that. Um, Another reason I'm not too worried about you not having the hands-on experience is because that the, the yield models are um, not as commonly done in the type of fish management we do here in inland fisheries. Okay, All the stuff that you're likely to do, we have done in this class, and you have done them in R, and so you're going to be fine. Um, now, another thing is, is that we might move away from FAST, there might be some new models that come out that uh, do things in a different way. For example, individualized models. Uh, with FAST, you're using the traditional equations and solving these equations, whereas new models might be where you just model the behavior of individual fish and see how that, how that behaves. There, there's all kinds of new possibilities that, that are just waiting, you know, that, that I think are around the corner. And so, don't be surprised if you see some new ways of doing this. Um, now, a lot of this stuff, too, maybe doesn't fit into a regular fish management class. This might be more for advanced fish management or certainly for fish stock assessment. But the most important thing about this coming lecture is the terminology. Whether or not you actually ever play with FAST and use FAST to do this, I'm not sure, but you will hear people talking about things like growth overfishing, recruitment overfishing, uh, conditional fishing. All, all, there's a lot of terminology that I want you to have been exposed to and that I want you to understand. So that's really what we're kind of going for here. So once we get done with this, you're not going to be able to, to just jump into FAST and figure out how to use it, okay? Um, we just don't have time to get into that. But you will understand when people talk about this, and with just a little bit of effort, you'll be able to go and get the FAST software and figure it out, all right? So that's the idea behind this lecture. Okay. Longest intro ever. So you'll remember that the, we have the three dynamic rate functions which rule fish populations. Growth, mortality, and recruitment. All right? Remember those. Those, those are, come up all the time in job interviews. Now, of course, recruitment, we mean reproduction. So FAST, which is so, uh, software that stands for Fishery Analyses and Simulation Tools, works with all three of these and does a lot of the math that we need in fisheries. A um, couple things for background about the software called FAST. It was developed down in Auburn by uh, Slipke and Messina. Um, so those are a couple of names that you're going to run into. Certainly 
when you're looking at the mathematics of fisheries, those are a couple of big names. Of course, Arlburn, big fisheries program, right? You remember uh, that's where Swingle came from. Um, what else do I need to tell you? Oh, that um, they came out with this software. I'm not real sure. I want to say around 2000 or so. And a lot of people in fisheries knew about all this math and sort of studied this math, but it was just difficult to do because it required a lot of high-end calculations. And, and so a lot of people didn't use it. What they did when they made FAST is they made it the, these uh, mathematical simulations accessible to a lot of fisheries people because it's a pretty easy program, pretty straightforward to use. And so you saw a, sort of a proliferation of a lot of papers and research done where they started doing a lot of the modeling that we always talked about. And that's simply because of this one program made it easier. So it's, um, it's a pretty big deal and it's pretty cool that they did it. Okay, um, now we said growth, mortality, and um, recruitment are our three dynamic rate functions. Excuse me. We've done growth to death. We've talked about growth in a lot of detail. Growth is a really important concept. So we're not going to get into growth. We're going to talk about mortality and recruitment in a little bit more detail. So let's do a little review here. You'll remember that uh, mortality is symbolized by capital Z. And that's made up of fishing mortality, capital F, and natural mortality, capital M. Z equals F plus M. And you'll recall that these are instantaneous rates. So they're difficult to understand conceptually. They're over, you know, in an instant in time. What is the mortality? But they're important mathematically. You'll remember that we can convert these into... Uh, annual rates that are much easier to conceptualize. For example, you can get survival by taking E and raising it to the negative Z. And so it converts your instantaneous rate to an actual rate. So S is a percent that survive each year. That's something that you can put your mind around a little bit. You also remember then that once you have annual survival, then you just subtract that from one and you get annual mortality. Now, if you think about it, if you look at Z, if you look at total mortality, that changes once the fish recruit into a fishery. And that's sort of symbolized by this graph here. You'll see that we've got age on the x-axis and the natural log of the number of age. Um, so basically you've got a catch curve here, right? And if you look, um, what they're trying to represent with this graph is that up to a certain age, you only have natural mortality affecting the population. But then when the fish recruit to the fishery, now you've got both natural mortality and fishing mortality affecting the population. And you see how the graph um, uh, becomes more steep once they recruit to the fishery. I want to point out that a lot of the graphs and almost all the information in this is from Slipke and Messina 2001. And what this is, is simply the manual that they wrote uh, for the FAST software. And, and you can download it for free in a PDF. Um, I give you a copy in a PDF. It's a really good reference because they go through lots of examples. They've got lots of good graphs. Um, so if you're trying to learn FAST, get this PDF and work through it and you'll be great. And so that's where a lot of this information comes from. Now, it's important to remember um, that this happens when you're modeling. So if you're trying to model a cohort until the last one of them dies, you need to know this. But in normal sampling, remember that we only worry about fish that have recruited to the gear or recruited to the fishery. We ignore those small ones. So, you know, we're going to kind of ignore these early ones in that first part of the curve. Okay, so that's uh, total mortality. How do we get F? Remember that um, we just look at the effort uh, expanded by the, the fishermen or the anglers. So we can tag a bunch of fish. Then we count out what percentage of the tagged fish get caught. 
that is not capital F. That's not instantaneous fishing mortality. That is called exploitation, and it's symbolized by a U. Okay, so the number of recaps by the fishermen or by the anglers divided by the total number tagged, that's going to be uh, a proportion, or you multiply by 100 to make it a percentage. I think you're going to leave it as a proportion. Whatever. Yeah, you're going to leave it as a proportion. That's going to be exploitation. All right. Then you can use exploitation and total mortality and, of course, survival to get fishing mortality. So, um, again, it's just a matter of getting the raw data, plugging it in to get the instantaneous rate which you need for modeling. Okay, and if you have Z and F, you can subtract to get M. And this is pretty much always the way you do it because it's very difficult, if not impossible, to measure natural mortality. Okay, so that's a review of what we've already talked about. And as we expand the theoretical mathematics behind the mortality rates and how they affect populations, we get into something called conditional mortalities. So we had our instantaneous mortalities and our our actual mortalities. Now we're going to talk about conditional mortalities. And these are both theoretical values. So I want you to remember that, that neither of these um, is an actual uh, parameter uh, that you can relate to the actual population. Um, they're both theoretical values that you use for modeling, but they're certainly they're valid nonetheless. We just need them for the modeling. The first is conditional fishing mortality. The second is conditional natural mortality. So why are they theoretical? Conditional fishing mortality, for example, is the fishing mortality as if no natural mortality is occurring. Okay, and that's what makes it theoretical because, of course, there's always natural mortality. Fish are always dying on their own. For the, I mean, there's no such thing as a fully exploited uh, population where no natural mortality ever occurs. That just doesn't happen. That's why this is a theoretical rate. Uh, most fisheries are what they call type 2 fisheries, which means both fishing and natural mortality are occurring at the same time. That means that you always have some natural mortality, so the conditional fishing mortality is a theoretical rate as if there's no natural mortality is occurring. Well, how do I know that, right? How in the world do I figure out what the mortality rate would be if there's no natural mortality rate? Well, we've got, a, we've got an equation for that, which we'll show you here in a second. Um, now, one thing to think about, and this is where to conceptualize when we're talking about a fishery here. Fishing and natural mortality influence one another in real life, okay? So fish that are destined to be caught by the fisherman or the angler might die of natural causes instead. So this fish's destiny is to be caught based upon, you know, the rate of fishing mortality, the rate of fishing effort that's out there. But before it gets caught, it actually dies. That can happen. In the same token, fish that are destined to just die of old age, you know, to die naturally, oops, they get caught before that they get caught before they die of old age. Okay? That's how fishing and natural mortality are always influencing one another. That's why we need uh, excuse me. That's why we need these theoretical conditional values for modeling, okay? So basically we're saying, um, like for example, conditional fishing mortality. We're saying that based upon how hard we're fishing, this is how many fish should die, you know, should be caught every year. But we don't catch that many because some of them die of natural causes. Some of them get eaten, for example, before we can actually catch them. That's the idea behind these conditional rates. So don't knock yourself out about them too much. 
but they are important for modeling. Um, another way to think about this is the conditional fishing or conditional natural mortality values allow us to, we, we can vary one while controlling for the other. So for example, we can, we can vary conditional fishing mortality while holding conditional, uh, because it's, it's fishing, let me rephrase that. I'm sorry, I don't want to be confusing here. Conditional fishing mortality is the mortality that would occur, the fishing mortality that would occur if there's no natural mortality. So we can vary the conditional fishing rate and it's sort of like we're holding natural mortality constant at zero, right? So again, that's why it's important for modeling. Um, so a question that I would ask then is which is larger? Conditional fishing mortality or exploitation? Think about it. Well, conditional fishing mortality is always going to be larger, right? Because that's the fishing mortality as if there's no natural mortality. But of course, in real life, there's always natural mortality. So the, the, the exploitation rate is always going to be lower. What is actually caught by the fishermen is, is going to be always going to be lower than conditional fishing because some of those fish die before we catch them. So again, think of conditional fishing mortality as how many fish you would catch based upon the fishing effort. So we're fishing this hard, we expect to catch this many fish. But we never quite catch that many because some of them die of natural causes. Okay? I've beaten that to death. Okay, now another thing that I want to make clear here is that when we talk about how um, fishing mortality and natural mortality affect one another, we're not discussing density dependent factors like we do in ecology. Okay, so for example, in ecology, we talk about how as fishing mortality goes up, natural mortality goes down because of there are fewer fish, each fish has more resources, so the remaining fish have greater survival, they reproduce more, right? Those compensatory mechanisms, those density dependent mechanisms, that's all valid. And we talk about that in ecology all the time, but that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is strictly a mathematical relationship, okay? And so we're not talking biology, we're talking math. And we're talking about how fishing mortality and natural mortality affect one another mathematically, okay? But it's all good. It's all good. Uh, we still have all these things that are going on at the same time, we can understand them all. What we want to do is work just with the mathematical portion of this now to, under, to help the math, um, to have the math help us understand what's going on in our population. Okay, so now we had conditional fishing mortality. Of course, conditional natural mortality is the natural mortality that we would get as if no fishing mortality is occurring, okay? Now, again, this is a theoretical value, right? Because often when we're modeling a population, we also, we have some fishing mortality, but this actually might be more realistic. You might find more examples of this in real life. For example, say Gizzard Shad in Spring Lake, all right? There's no fishing mortality going on with these Gizzard Shad. And so it's all natural mortality. They either get eaten, they go over the spillway, they get, a, you know, they get an infection and die, or they just die of old age, something like that. So for the gizzard shad in Spring Lake, you could argue that conditional mortality rate is equal to the annual mortality rate because there is no fishing in real life, okay? But a lot of times we're modeling populations that do have both fishing and natural mortality, a type two fishery. And so conditional natural mortality is what we would expect to die of natural causes, but in fact, some of them get caught before this happens. Um, 
and so the conditional natural mortality is is a kind of a theoretical value. Okay, so I promised that we would give you equations for how to figure these out, and here they are, and they're straightforward. If you know the instantaneous rates, you just plug them in and you get the conditional rates. And that's, um, that's really just uh, it for mortality. Now in FAST, you can uh, enter your your population data, so the, um, the same stuff you use, say, for a catch curve, you'd enter the age of the fish and the number that you got at each age class, and FAST will do all the mortality calculations for you, just like we did in R. Okay. Now, I uh, brought up the conditional fishing mortality, conditional natural mortality values, because we're going to need them a little bit later when we talk about some of the, the other stuff that FAST can do. Okay, so um, three rate functions, growth, mortality, and recruitment. So now let's talk a little bit about recruitment. One way that we can look at recruitment in our population is something called the spawning potential ratio, the SPR. And so this is one of those terms that you might hear thrown about, and this is what they're talking about. The SPR is simply the number of eggs that the whole population would produce, the, the number, excuse me, the number of eggs produced in the population that is fish, divided by the number of eggs that would be produced if it was unfished, okay? So think of a population that is unexploited and so here's the maximum number of eggs that you would expect this population to produce, right? There's only natural mortality going on. In reality, we have some fishing pulling those females out, um, and so there are fewer eggs produced than what we would expect. So the number of eggs actually produced in a fished population divided by the number of eggs in an unfished population, that's your spawning potential ratio. Of course, this is going to run from 100%. So there's no fishing pressure, then you've got the maximum amount of eggs being produced all the way down to 0%, which means all fish are caught before they spawn. And of course, in real life, you're going to be in between these two extremes. And the rule of thumb is an SPR of 30 to 40%, that's sort of your critical range, okay? And my understanding is that this is, this is pretty much across a lot of populations and a lot of different species and SPR in the 30 to 40 range is kind of the the butter, not necessarily the butter zone, but it's a critical zone, right? Above this, the population can sustain itself. You have a sustainable fishery. Um, so you're producing enough eggs to replace those fish that you pull out and you never have to worry about the population crashing, at least for this reason. Now, if you get less than 30% SPR, you're going to get something called recruitment overfishing. That's another important term that I want you to know that you're going to hear about a lot. In recruitment overfishing, uh, let's break that down. First off, it's overfishing. It's fishing too much and it's causing a problem with recruitment. So you're pulling out too many fish and you don't leave enough to replace the fish that die. Either to replace the ones that you pulled out or to replace the ones that die of natural cause, uh, causes. And so you get the potential for the population to crash. And that's why this is a really important thing to study, right? So Think about this um, conceptually. If you've got a population of fish and you fish it incredibly hard, you just fish and catch as many fish as you can, as hard as you can, what would you expect to happen? All the fish to disappear, the population to crash, right? Well, this is going to happen long before you, you're not going to catch every single fish. You don't have to, right? You catch enough of uh, those breeding females, the ones that are left don't produce enough eggs and 
the population cannot replenish itself. You're pulling out, in recruitment over fishing, you're pulling out the females before they get to use up their lifetime supply of eggs, right? Maybe they spawn once or twice, but, and so they're, they're putting some eggs into the population, but, you know, in reality, their destiny was to spawn five, six, seven times, and you're pulling them out before they get to do that spawning, right? And if you do this enough, you're going to have lots of, of uh, just, you know, sub-adult fish that aren't ready to spawn, so you're not getting any eggs produced, and then you're still pulling those fish out for the fishery, and if you pull out too many of them, the remaining ones might die of natural causes before they get a chance to spawn, and then you've got a, a population that disappears, right? And so this SPR of 30% seems to be a critical value. And so we always want to avoid recruitment overfishing because that can lead to a catastrophe in your fishery. Okay, that's the first part having to do with some of the things that we can do in FAST, and mostly that was a review. In the second part, we're going to talk about other ways that we can use FAST to model populations and to look at things like yield and how does yield vary when we vary the fishing effort and we vary the size at which we can take a fish. So I'll see you in a little bit. Bye-bye.